Hello and uh, welcome to another somewhat useless steam video in the, my series of useless steam videos. Uh, the last one uh, was uh, what is Squick and what does Squick do and uh, I was pretty happy with the way that turned out because I had a lot of questions about about uh, some of these treatment uh, options out there and um, I certainly didn't know anything about Squick before the video and learned quite a bit about it and uh, I'm still it's been a few weeks and I'm still untreated so I just have water in my boiler right now but uh, I realized I have a um, a little bottle of Surge X and I thought oh I'll try Surge X for my next video and that'll put some treatment back in my boiler so I looked at the uh, directions. Um, uh, they want you to drain the boiler if there's other boiler treatments. I don't have any of that, so I'm fine there. They want you to relieve pressure. I'm not sure what the, <laughs> they're talking about there. Maybe in a in a hot water boiler is what they're referring to. Um, add one surge X per 600 square feet radiation. I've got like 230, so. I'll be adding uh, about a third of a bottle to start with. This is 1.5 ounces, so I've got uh, I've got a, about 0.5 ounces here. Um, my scale, as I weighed it, it wasn't coming out right. When I was trying to fight to get to 0.5 ounces, it was taking up almost half this bottle. So I assume my scale was just bad. So I just I just estimated one third of a bottle here. And it's got this orange color. It's a powder. I think as soon as I put it in some water, it's going to turn green. It's This is the treatment that we see uh, in some people's photos on HeatingHelp.com where they have this bright neon green or yellow uh, boiler treatment. So let's let's see if that's the case. I have my... Um, I turned off my boiler for a while, so I've, I've lost a few degrees of temperature so I could have a nice return from uh, on the setback as I... Uh, as I run it with this treatment. So what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm going to mix uh, mix this treatment in with this water and then I'll pour it into my sort of my skim setup over here where I pour my treatment into the the boiler and I'll let the boiler run um, I might as well start it up right now. I don't have any reason to hold off on that. Let my boiler run and uh, and see how it does. And I'll cut the video and I'll come back after after it's been boiling uh, with that first dose of Surgex in it. Because uh, it's probably going to be boring. So I'll cut all that out. And then I'll add more Surgex um, after that first batch. You know, I'll measure the... I'll measure the pH and see how it's doing and, you know, take a look and see if there's anything happening here with the risers. And uh, that's the plan. So, okay, so Surge X, I'm going to just put it in here first. Yeah. So look at that. That's the real color that I'm seeing here. It's, um, it's a very wild <laughs> neon yellow right now. So yeah, I don't know if I can wrangle this with one hand or not. I'll start out over here, open that up. See if I can do this without spilling the whole thing. And still get some kind of usable video. Yeah, I'm going to spill a lot of this. Oh, there, that's not too bad. Okay. There it goes. It is awfully it looks like it looks like coolant. It's so neon. Neon yellow. And this will be good because this water will bring my level back up closer to the normal water line. I haven't I haven't added any water since that last video. So I'm down about it. I'm down about a gallon or a gallon and a half. It's been I'm not sure how long it's been. Has it been a month? All right, so there's a little bit in the bottom there still, but... All right. 
it's in there and uh, I'll cut it here and uh, be back after it's done some boiling. All right, hello again, steam fans. It's uh, it's the next day. I didn't get a chance to come back and revisit the boiler after I used that first approximately one half ounce of Surgex powder yesterday. Surgex boiler treatment manufactured by Rector Seal. So that first. Um, that first uh, one half ounce, it didn't seem to do anything. And uh, excuse me, I have to walk over here and get my test strips because I left them out of reach. All right, let's see if I can do this again. <laughs> totally unprepared, of course, to make a video. So let me get my test strips out because uh, I was thinking that um, Nothing was really going on initially, and it wasn't. You know, I put in that first dose, which was a, which was a full dose for this size boiler, one third of a Surgex bottle for uh, around 200 square feet of uh, steam that this boiler produces, and you can see that it colored the boiler water just slightly. I don't know how well it comes in on the camera, but um, I was running pure water, and it was basically clear. Now you can see it's got a slight yellow tinge to it and that's the color of Surgex once it hits your water it turns yellow it it might have a marker in it as well a pH marker which uh, several other products also have and uh, I wanted to I wanted to test the pH you know I I used to think that too much pH made a boiler surge, and my 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 previous video about uh, an earlier video about eight way convinced me that that's not the case because I I overloaded this boiler with way too much eight way, <laughs> like way too much, and the pH got up to I don't even know it was off the scale, but uh, it was probably at least pH thirteen or fourteen. So I stopped believing that too much pH could cause surging, but that doesn't mean nothing can cause surging. So let's see. Wow, look at that. All right, that is, that's the pH currently after one dose of Surge X. Now here's my meter up here. That is pretty dark. Uh, that's definitely, I mean, well, I can't say definitely, that's got to be a 9 or a 10. That is pretty dark. So so one dose one dose of Surgex took my boiler to where I would normally keep it around 10, let's say pH. I might push it a little bit 10 to 11. Um and everything seemed good yesterday, but then today when I came back to have a look and record this video, I got a big surprise because check this out. These are my sight glasses on my on my two steam supplies. And look at that. Now it was not by any means doing this prior to me adding the Surgex. Now I did add I did add approximately uh, two thirds of a gallon of water with that Surgex. Maybe three quarters, maybe it was three quarts uh, of a gallon of water um, with the Surgex dose yesterday. And so that raises the water line, of course, right? And when you raise the water line, you do increase the chances of, uh, you know, water getting up into your uh, supply lines, depending on, you know, the, the overall distance and all that. But but I've tested this boiler several, many times now with, with a bunch of different things in it. And pure water and eight-way dosed water do not behave like this. Like I had to, I had to crank the water level to the very top of the sight glass in order to see, in order to see uh, this kind of uh, carryover in the past. So this tells me that the Surgex is, is causing this. 
I ran it. I ran the boiler for several weeks with clean water and never saw a drop in these uh, in these sight glasses. So I was really, <laughs> really surprised to see it um, here from just a normal dose of Surgex. So I don't know. I mean, uh, from this, I would not be putting Surgex in my boiler. There's no way. Some something in Surgex. Is causing my boiler to uh, froth and uh, boil more violently than it did with pure with just with water and also more violently than it did with a whole heck of a lot of eight-way in it I mean like a lot of eight-way like a like a half bottle which which is outrageous amount of eight-way for this size of boiler it I didn't see a drop I have a I have that on video uh, you can look it up on my uh, on my list of videos. So now I've got a I've got a drop header here. So we're not seeing anything happen up here at, at the uh, at the riser to the main. You know our, the the drop header is doing its job. Any and you can see the the water's bouncing up. You know this high, and that's about it. It's not really carrying over. Okay, and this I would expect that a lot of boilers. A lot of steam boilers behave about this well, depending, you know, if, if, if they've got something going on with their water or if they're piped really low, you can expect some water will kind of, could kind of come up. Or if they're a, or if they're a Dunkirk style where the feed, the supply line comes off the side here, you know there's splashing going on down there. So this is, you know, this is not outrageous, but to, to me, it's kind of outrageous because why? What what is what's in Surgex that's making it do this? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the boiler. Oh, here's some of that boiling. You can see it's you can see it's pushing water up into my skim tapping. Now I've uh, I've uh, I've got another I have another third of the Surgex here, you know, in for a what is it in for a penny in for a pound. I have no doubt that various plumbers have overdosed boilers with Surgex. We've seen pictures on HeatingHelp.com on the Strictly Steam forum where I'm always hanging out. We've seen pictures of very bright colored water in the sight glasses of people's boilers. Uh, this color right here. You know, this is going to, when I pour this into my boiler, it's going to get uh, mixed in with, what is it, about nine gallons of water. So it's not going to be this thick. But I've seen it looking this thick on people's photos. So I expect what peop what plumbers do is they're putting a whole bottle of Surgex into their customers' boilers. So I'm going to put a whole bottle of Surgex into my boiler. One third at a time. And I love my um, I love my skim tapping for this purpose because with the valve on it because it just makes it so easy to screw up my boiler <laughs> for these videos. I mean, can you imagine having to ugh, take off the pressure relief valve and pour junk in there that way? What a what a waste of time. All right, there it is, the second dose of Surgex. So, you know, to be clear, this is more than what the Surgex, the Rector Seal people indicate on the bottle. And uh, so just uh, making it clear, this is not what they recommend. They recommend that first dose I put in. But since that first dose made a negative result, I just really wanted to see what a little bit more would do. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut the video again here. I've just turned the boiler back on again so we can get it boiling and then I'll come back and uh, and we'll see what it does with this second dose. I There's going to be a combination because my water level is getting right about up to where I'd like to keep it. 
right about where this cross is or a little higher is where I like to have it and that's where the factory says to keep it you can see the line back there and I had mentioned before I had the water level a little low um, before so so now with the higher water level just if I had just added water, the bringing up the, wa the, the water level higher should, should result in more visible water in my uh, steam supply. But, but that in combination with adding another approximately half ounce of Surgex, I expect we will see a noticeable change in, uh, in the amount of water getting thrown up there. So, um, yeah, I guess I could also... I want to make sure that the the water I'm seeing here, yeah, that's the color. I wasn't, I'm never sure how how quickly this uh, the water in the sight glass mixes, you know, with the with the rest of the boiler water. So by draining it a few times, I've ensured fresh water from the boiler has uh, come up into the sight glass here. So yeah, that's the current color. I just dumped in that extra bucket. And once it boils, we'll see how that mixes and we'll see what happens with it. So uh, I'll be back. Okay, I just initiated a call for heat. Uh, the boiler's been sitting at this level for about a day. I have put in two thirds or a little less than two thirds of one bottle of Surgex, um, which is more than uh, the instructions call for, to be fair. But. Um, I saw some I saw some weird behavior after the first dose so I wanted to see what happened on the second dose and as this uh, call for heat just kicks in we can see that we're it's 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 worse now it's, uh, it's you can almost see the suds um, that are getting thrown up. It's not just splashes of water, it's also sort of clumps of, um, sort of clumps of bubbles that are getting thrown up. And it's more activity than was happening uh, before. This is right at the very beginning of a call for heat. So I'd expect this might crank up a little bit more once, once the steam really starts um, flowing out of here. So that's pretty weird. Uh, and I, I've thought about it over the last day, like what, what's going on that could be in this surgex that's causing this behavior. Look at that. It's like the reverse of what surgex should do. It's increasing the surging. No question about it. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to, I guess I know what's going to happen. I'm going to put in this, hang on, I'll turn it off. I'm going to put in this third dose, the remainder of Surgex. And all the, this is really just uh, to show what overdosing on Surgex might do. Um, if your plumber puts in a whole bottle of Surgex, this is, this is what you'd see. Now, this is a small boiler, okay? There's only nine or ten gallons of water in this thing. So... Here's the here's the remainder of the Surgex. I think I undershot it a little bit on the first two doses. So this is a little bit more than the remaining one third. And as I stir this up, you can see again this crazy neon color that results. And uh, I also wanted to do this. Here's the pH. The pH after the first dose was somewhere around 9 or 10. The second dose is going to be pretty high pH as well. So there's the color. It looks, it looks almost black. It's very dark. So now I say it's, you know, it's up to 13 or to 14 or maybe more that's as high as it measures on that gauge so open up the skim tap here this is looking very uh, dark 
And then the other reason I'm doing this is, like I said before, just to repeat myself here, I know I've seen pictures of people's boilers and pictures of the sight glasses where the color was very bright green, like a like a coolant, automotive coolant green. So I want to see if that's the level of green I end up getting on uh, here, because right now it's it's showing up a little bit green. Uh, it's funny. The directions say um, fire boiler. If water in gauge glass is not green, add more surgex. So I'm kind of following the directions because I don't know. I mean, it's this is slight, very, very slightly green, but it's not. It's not too, too green, so I don't know. So we'll turn this back on and uh, let that get up to boiling again and mix up that new remaining dose of Surgex and we'll see what that final, final, comp final part does for my uh, boiler. I'm pretty certain it's gonna be surging even more. Uh, so uh, I'll be back. All right, it's, uh, it's been a few days since I put the rest of the Surgex into my boiler and it uh, it does have the water looking pretty yellow but I swear I've seen other pictures of people where it looked even more green or yellow. So the problem and uh, I don't know and I saw a hint of this before but check this out. This is pretty dramatic surging uh, when it when it first starts firing up it's it I just shut it off when I when it first starts firing it up it looks kind of like soap suds um, coming up I'm gonna turn it back on again because I, I want to show you what's happening there this is kind of what it looks like when it first starts and then you'll see as it as it starts boiling more from the you know from the fire heating up the water more it's going to be producing more steam here so it just it fills up these these initial steam supplies here with frothing you know frothing foaming water this is exactly what a product like Surgex is supposed to prevent so I don't know what's going on with it. It had it had pure water in it when I added the Surgex. Although I will say that it uh, I had also used Squick in my previous video just prior to this. So there is a chance that the that the you know Squick Squick took and and um, encapsulated some oil that I had put in the boiler in that video and it's possible that some of that encapsulated gunk was still you know was stuck to the side of the boiler uh, and that and that maybe this product Surgex is interacting with that so let me show you the extent of this so so this is this is not great this is bad right but I've got a drop header so so as this frothy stuff comes over, it comes into the comes into the header, and it has a chance to get uh, sent back down the equalizer. But look, and the, and the boiler just shut off to test the water level here. It's even getting past all that. It's getting past the drop header, and it was getting up into the the supply for the. Um, for the main itself. So this is really not great. I got to get this stuff out of here. So, you know, it's turn this back off again. It's boiling hot water, so I'm going to be careful, but uh, now is the time when I'm able to do this. So
surge at. And I have a small boiler, so it's it's got like nine gallons in it. This is like a three gallon bucket, so I'll, I'll do this three times. I won't subject you to having to watch this bucket fill up three times. I'll just take care of that on my own. But uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'm draining it and I'm gonna slowly refill it. Um, it's, uh, it's a question, how, how quickly can you refill a boiler that's hot, right, without damaging it? So I, I've, re I've refilled this one a few times in situations similar to this, where I wanted to uh, you know drain it and refill it with clean water. And I always just fill it slowly. I have my, my filler is, is actually across the room, which I don't see anyone else doing much, but I really like it because um, it's over there where my, where my wet return is. So all this area, all this here of the wet return is condens condensation here. It comes around the back side of the boiler here, and it goes up the Hartford loop here, and all that is right now is pretty hot. And as I add, you know, cold water from the city over there, it will, it gets warmed by this, by the metal of the pipe. It gets warmed by this pipe and uh, it gets a little bit warmed up as it goes into the boiler. And then I, I keep it slow so I don't ram a bunch of water in there all at once. So, you know, cross my fingers. <laughs> Hope I don't, you know, crack my boiler, but I don't really want to wait what is it going to be, like four hours before this boiler cools down, probably. Uh, so there you have it. So let me let me get the rest of this water out here, and I'll, I'll come back after I've got it refilled with fresh water. Oh, yeah, and sorry, one more thing. I did want to did want to show the, the color of the uh, pH level right now. I think that's what it was last time I showed you, and it's... It's definitely up there at the edge of, of what the of what these strips can measure. So it's it's 13 or 14 or even higher perhaps. So there you go. Draining more of it. I'll be back. All right, I got all the water drained out. I'm uh, slowly refilling the boiler with uh, fresh water. And uh, while that's happening, I thought I would record this um, little bit about the contents of uh, what's in some of these treatments. So my favorite treatment is, um, is Rectorsol 8-Way. Uh, and the one I just am testing in this video is Surgex, by, also by Rector Seal. I said Rector Saw. It's Rector Seal, right? Um, they make a ton of products, uh, not just these kinds of treatments, but they make a bunch of hardware products too. And um, it's it's really interesting to me with these treatments. I don't know if they bought these treatments from from other companies over the years, or they were just developed by different people. But one thing that's really I find interesting is the the, the ingredients, the active ingredients in these treatments. Is completely different between Surgex and Eight Way, and uh, they're not they're not very different in what they do, but th but they're di they're different chemical compounds, uh, I think. So I'm not a chemist, so some of this is going to just be me relying on Wikipedia uh, on this. But so here's Surgex. So you can see uh, I like to look at the percentage by weight, right? So so the main ingredient is this first one, tetrasodium. That's the easy part. Ethyl linediamine tetraacetate. Okay, that's one word. Ethyl linediamine. In, in how does that work? Linediamine. Mitra acetate. I don't know. That word is more than I can handle. So I looked that up on Wikipedia, and that's a chelating agent 
used for corrosion removal and descaling. So, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, that's fine, but that's, that's the majority part of, um, of uh, Surgex. The next ingredient is sodium sulfite. And this is real common in these treatments. This is an alkaline or base that's used in detergents. So it's, it's a, um, I don't know, it's, well, you can see what it is. It's sodium sulfite. It's, that's the actual ingredient. But um, a lot of these uh, detergents use this to raise the alkaline level, uh, which, which provides good cleaning action, just like lye. And then um, the third ingredient is sodium carbonate. Uh, and that's another alkaline, and this one's used in washing soda. Uh, and maybe, maybe even that is what washing soda is, is sodium carbonate. It's, uh, like I said, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know what these things are. But um, they're also used in food production. You know, you say it says no sulfites. You know, on some on some food, um, it's used in curing. It's used in meat tenderizing. Um, you know, other people know more about this stuff than I do. So that's so that's Surgex. So main ingredient: descaling and corrosion removal. And then these other ingredients, which I think they're just there to set the pH level level of the water. That's my, that's my guess. So this other document is the um, uh, the MSDS or whatever it is for um, for eight way. Uh, and and it's if you look at its ingredients, the percentage by weight is a lot less because eight way comes already mixed with water, which we see water down here, 75, 73 percent of of eight way is water. And it makes sense because they ship it in a quart or a gallon container of liquid, whereas Surgex was just the powder components, you know, without being mixed with water. So, so the first ingredient, so you have to take these percentages in, into account that way, right? So these aren't listed in order. So the, the first ingredient is sodium hydroxide, which is 15%. And... If you if you look at it this way, it's 15. Let's see, 15 plus 5, so that's 20. So, but about 25 percent of these ingredients are not water. So we can see that um, this ingredient is about three times more than any of the other ingredients. So sodium hydroxide, it's basically lye. It's also known as caustic soda. And it's it's there to provide the the base or the alkaline level of the water, I I believe. And um, the next one is sodium nitrite, and that's a corrosion inhibitor, a meat tenderizer, and it's also used in murder and suicide, quite a bit. Uh, fun fact: my great grandfather, I believe, killed himself by drinking lye. So I don't know, he could have got a hold of some eight way. Uh, that was a long time ago. I never knew. And then the last ingredient is sodium phosphate. And that's a, yet another alkaline, which is also used as a colonoscopy prep. So uh, some of these ingredients are used. Historically, they were used as... Uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but um, to help with your uh, digestive system. I'll say it. Same way as you have to do for a colonoscopy, right? So, and it seemed like some of those were historically used for that purpose. Um, they're not necessarily used for that anymore. But uh, there you go. So, different three or three different ingredients completely in an eight way. Uh, but but they do the same kinds of things. They're uh, they're uh, alkalines. A lot of them. And then, you know, something that, uh, something in the other uh, product that removes scale or corrosion. And, again, I don't want to slam on, I can't, I can't believe Rector Seal would put out a product that actually increased your surging. So, but, 
but my boiler, even though it's relatively new, it's seen some different stuff in it. So I have, to, I can't imagine that other people who have used Surgex have not seen, have not had a similar situation. Now they didn't know when you're when a normal boiler is surging like that. It's not always easy to tell. You know, no, no, no one else has sight glasses on their boiler where they can see the surging happen. You have to look for things like the the water level bouncing. Um, you could take off the um, the main vents. So here's my main vents right now. I just have one of them actually uh, operational right now. If you were to remove these vents and you were really surging, you know, water could be coming, getting thrown up into the main and it would be flowing really hard down, down here and it could jump jump up here and you could see it or maybe if you took the vent off you could you could hear it i have another sight glass here on my return as it as it drops down to a or the end of my main as it drops down to the wet return so i can see when when my boiler is surging uh it's a pity no one else can but uh they just have to guess so i i would not recommend i can't recommend surgex because, um, you know, it definitely caused a lot of surging in my boiler. And I had just flushed the boiler and then refilled it. So sometimes these products, they, they want you to put them in and, and use them for like a week and then drain the boiler and refill it. So, you know, maybe it, it did remove some, some little bit of corrosion I have in this new boiler. This boiler is like just a little over a year old. Um, maybe it removed some of that corrosion. Maybe there was some gunk from Squick left behind that it didn't like, and it was, uh, it was surging because of that. I don't know, but, um, I'll, uh, I'll be draining this again because, see, there's still some yellow color here, right? So there was still a little bit of the Surgex in there. And I'll be draining it again until it's clear, and then I'll, I'll run it again, and I'm going to be putting a little bit. I'll put the, my normal dose of eight way in there. I uh, I have to do this because uh, quickly because while I've been doing this test, I turned off my hot water loop. I just can I I shut off the supply to it, so it's a cold water loop right now. Um, and my wife's been complaining because the the floors I've I, I made staple up uh, radiant in my living room and I also have uh, I also have in floor uh, radiant you know it's in the subfloor radiant in the upstairs bathroom and and those are run off the same hot water loop from this boiler and my wife's been complaining because the floors aren't warm because I didn't want squick and uh, surgex running through my hot water loop I just run the boiler water, you know, directly into my hot water loop. I pump it um, into those loops directly. So I didn't want those materials, <laughs> those, those chemicals going into my hot water loop because it would take forever to get those out. You can't just, it's a pain in the butt to have to flush that. So I, I kept that sealed off with fresh, just with plain water. But I'm not afraid to run an eight-way in that loop. And I had run it in there in the past and it was fine. And uh, I like the eight-way in that loop, too, because I'm just using a cast iron uh, pump. And because it's cheap and I wanted to try it before I spent three times the money on a, on a bronze one. So I'm running a cast iron pump on my hot water loop, which you're not, you're not advised to do if you have an open system like a, like a steam boiler situation. And, uh, but I've, I'm doing that because since I run treated water I feel like the the corrosion is is reduced or eliminated so I, I'm doing that as an experiment as well so a uh, lot of a lot more words sorry about that I will uh, I'm gonna drain this out and then refill it and I'll I'll come back on when I show you me adding my uh, eight way back into this thing all right we're back with nice clear water
perfectly dry looking steam being produced right now. Not any sign of uh, anything. Not one splash. So, so that's that's what the boiler should be doing. Now that I got the surge X out of there, I did fill it. Uh, you know, I drained the surge X out. I did fill it up to the uh, normal water line with water, and then I drained that all again because it was I could still see some yellow color. So I filled it and drained it. And then filled it again, and um, I could drink this water. It's just, just totally clear. And um, I don't really want to do this with it running, so I'll turn it off here and let it stop boiling. I've got my old reliable eight-way here, and. It's not this much, okay? This I I put around eight ounces into this container, and then I I put another eight ounces of water in it to to dilute it a little bit for when I pour it in, and um, that's what it looks like in the bottle. So I diluted it 50% here. It still looks exactly the same, but whatever. So there's the. See a little condensation vapor coming out of there. This again is my uh, skim tap setup. I keep it tilted upward like this so that I can pour things into the boiler, right? And that's what I did. That's how I got the surge X in there, as you saw. That's how everything goes in. There it is. I like to pour a little water, chase it with a little bit of water so I don't have the treatment sitting in my skim tapping. Because there's a little bit of a high spot in there that it will sit at. So I just pour, I follow it with a little fresh water. That's just fine. Close that back up. Turn the boiler back on and I'll let that boil a little bit. And then I'll drain the I'll drain some water. I'll drain the um gauge glass here after it's had a chance to boil and circulate that uh, eight way around a little bit because it won't fill you know it'll take quite some time for it to fill up this glass with that uh, with the eight way and this way I can grab another one of my pieces of litmus paper and uh, see see what my pH is at and I'm sure it'll be fine I, I'd leave it around 10 or 11 something like that I had the one video where I, I pumped a ton of eight way into this thing and had the pH way over way off the chart I put in, I don't think I put the whole quart in, but it was uh, at least at least half the quart I put into this thing, and the pH was off the top of my what my paper could measure, and it was just fine. It didn't cause any surging at all, so pH alone does not cause surging. That's what we learned in that video. All right, let's let's blow down this. Um, gauge glass here and see if the here it comes <laughs> so you saw that right the clear the clear went away and now I've got good old uh, good old eight weight marking my water here so I'll just pour a little bit out 
like this. And there it is. It's it's not quite as dark as it appears on the camera. So I it's between uh, I would say it's between like a nine and a ten. It's probably it's probably about a ten. And that's just fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother adding any more. That's enough pH level. So now that's that's running just fine. Everything's cool here. No carryover. No appearance of any splashing at all. So even if even if this thing was really poorly piped, if it had a and I I do this test, right? I close one of these supplies so all the steam now is coming out of a single two inch supply there's not a single drop of not one splash of boiling water here so even even if this was really poorly piped so even if it came up to here and without a drop header if the header height was only here with the single it would be just fine so I'll put that back and down here is my um, hot water loop. So I can just, sorry, this is really dark. But I have a, I have a bald valve here that I just cracked just slightly open to allow the, uh, some of the hot water to come in from the boiler right down here to the pump. Grunfoss three-speed pump. I have it on the slowest speed, and you can feel it warm the pipe when water starts to come into it. So that'll make my floors nice and warm, and that's that's that. So Surgex test completed. Don't use it. <laughs> that's that's my advice. Stick to uh, stick to nice eight way. I don't use uh, don't use squick either. Unless there's absolutely no way for if you don't want to be able if you don't want to uh, be able if you can't skim your boiler maybe you have to use squick but just use eight way. It's good stuff. Those steam master tablets those are all gone now, right? We heard they were coming back, but I haven't seen them yet. If they come back, I'll test one of those. So that's it. Too much talking, as always. Sorry about that, but that's everything you wanted to know about Surgex. And uh, have a good day.